I've been a baseball fan since I was a little kid. My father took my brother and me to a Detroit Tigers game back in the 1960s, and I still remember vividly that, that almost garishly green field under the white lights and the, and the bright white uniforms of the players, and baseball just got in my mind from that night on. I became a player as a little guy. I was a t-ball player when I was seven, then I moved all through Little League and Babe Ruth League, and I became actually a pretty good shortstop and, and hitter by the time I was in um, high school. In 1969, we moved to Chicago, and I became, uh, God help me, a Cub fan in that very year when the Cubs collapsed. And so I learned a lot about hope and despair and all those things as a Cub fan. I've been a, a student of the great players over the years. So I've seen you know, Roberto Clemente play, and I've seen uh, Ernie Banks and Pete Rose and Cal Ripken and Brooks Robinson and many of the great players. And I've always admired them and loved watching them. Well, in 1999, I was a professor at the seminary, and a student there was getting ordained out in Seattle. And he knew how much I loved baseball, and he said, why don't we go to a Mariners game? And I wanted to go largely to see the great Alex Rodriguez. He was just kind of breaking into baseball. He was known as one of the finest players, and I wanted to see him play. And he didn't disappoint. That night he got, I think it was three hits. But what I remember most about A-Rod was his last at bat was a strikeout. But it was the most beautiful strikeout I've ever seen because he swung at the last pitch. And if you appreciate the baseball swing, he had the most balanced, elegant, beautiful swing. And I can still see that in my mind, A-Rod swinging at the baseball. Well, anyway, I was thinking about all this when the revelations came out recently about Alex Rodriguez's um, steroid use. And uh, you know, I was really saddened by it because here's the great A-Rod who's now joined these kind of sad ranks of, of a number of steroid abusers from uh, Ken Caminiti to Rafael Palmero to Mark McGuire and to Roger Clemens and, of course, uh, Barry Bonds. So he's, he's joined this kind of sad group. There's much, of course, you could say from a moral standpoint about the steroid abuse. You could say these players have cheated on their fellow players, they've abused their bodies, they've uh, undermined the integrity of the game, and all of that. And all that is true, of course, obvious enough. Here just struck me, though, as I read the stories about, about A-Rod especially in tandem with Barry Bonds, probably now the two most famous uh, steroid abusers. Barry Bonds and A-Rod began using steroids. So Bonds, I think in 1998, uh, A-Rod in 2001, when they were at the top of their games, when they were at the height of their powers, Barry Bonds began using steroids when he was already a three-time MVP. A-Rod began using steroids when he was already the recipient of the biggest contract in sports history. Both were seen at that time as the two best players in the game. They could out-hit, out-run, out-play almost anybody on the field. They were guaranteed Hall of Famers. They had more money than they could spend in 10 lifetimes. Okay, here's what I find puzzling. Why did they feel obliged to use steroids? They weren't you know, 250 hitters struggling to make it in the major leagues. They weren't minor leaguers hoping by this special uh, means to get into the major leagues. These were the two best players in the game. These were the, at the height of their powers. It's been suggested that Barry Bonds began using steroids because he was jealous of the McGuire-Sosa home run race in 98, and he wanted to get involved. A-Rod has suggested he was trying to live up to the expectations of his great contract. Well, okay, okay, as far as they go, that explains it a bit. But I think it goes much deeper than that. Go back to St. Augustine. The great Augustine talked about concupiscence or concupiscent desire. What he meant was this, an errant or fallen desire. Augustine knew, and it's one of the marks of his genius, Augustine knew that we are wired for God. Lord, you've made us for yourself, and therefore our hearts are restless until they rest in thee. We're wired for God. Therefore, if we take that deep desire for God and we hook it onto anything other than God, we become almost inevitably addicted. See, and here's why. The desire for God is infinite. You hook it onto money or success or power or fame or anything in this world, nothing in this world will satisfy it. Nothing in this world can satisfy it. And therefore, what do you do? Therefore, you go back obsessively to these wells. You go back to wealth again and again and again. I need more and more and more of it. You go back to power. You go back to honor. I need more and more and more of it. 
what Augustine called concupiscence, we probably today would call addiction and the addictive pattern. That's what I see in Barry Bonds, I see in Aaron, is these two figures at the height of their powers, nevertheless felt obliged to go back and back and back, to press it, press it, press it. What's the solution? And here our great spiritual tradition is unanimous. The solution is detachment, is to realize that my deepest desire, the desire of my heart, is ordered to God and to God alone. And therefore, even as I appreciate the things of the world, we're not Puritans, we're not Puritans, we appreciate the things of the world, but we know they're not God. And therefore, we adopt the stance of detachment vis-a-vis these things. See, and here's the thing, here's the hinge. Barry Bonds and A-Rod were not addicted to steroids per se, they were addicted to success. And we know this because at the height of their success, they still wanted more. One of the most liberating and salutary things we can know is this. We are not meant to be perfectly happy in this life. When we convince ourselves otherwise, we necessarily fall into one or more patterns of addiction. Bonds and Rodriguez, at the height of their powers, still felt this nagging sense of incompleteness. But that was not an invitation to take desperate measures. That was the invasion of grace. Thank you.